Coming up on Winthrop Close Up. Why am I standing in this cotton field with a cotton picking sack? Find out next. And are you obsessed with shopping? Find out if you're a fashion do or a fashion don't. Welcome to Winthrop Close Up. I'm Leslie Brown. And I'm Gabrielle Franklin. The saying is you don't know where you're going until you know where you've been. Reporter Cameron Powell takes us behind the scenes as a group of students uncovered some South Carolina history. Now when these owners say I like it when you've been in the backyard, just go ahead and start picking that cotton. Owner, one, two, three, four. I like it when you bend your back. Ha! I like it when you feel the sack. Come on, get it out. I like it when you don't talk back. Make money for me. Make money for me. Today, the Carroll School no longer functions as a traditional school, but rather as a field trip destination for fifth graders in Rock Hill County to learn a bit about the past. The fifth graders study in their curriculum this particular time period. So we take that time period of the 1930s of the Great Depression and we focus a lot on what happened during that time. Students come and learn about the history of the school from some of the first black students to ever attend. I spoke with one of the original students about what it was like to help pass on the history to the current generation. I guess you might call it a dream come true. I think I was so excited when I found out that they were going to use the school, which was my old alma mater, as a fifth grade social studies project. And I was very excited about it and so happy to uh, lend my uh, background to that project. And after learning a little bit of history about the school, students get a sack just like this and get to come out and see what it was really like to pick cotton all those years ago. James Lewis Hart attended the all-black high school Emmett Scott here in Rock Hill. He is now one of the teachers at the Hands-On Carroll School and says teaching is something that he is very passionate about. Whoever made the most money you see, what life is all about is giving back. So God gave me a lot, but he said, go back and share with those fifth graders some of the knowledge that you have accomplished over your time. And I did. The Carroll School, now in its 10th year since reopening, continues to ensure a bit of history is never forgotten by the youth. Cameron Powell, Winthrop Close-Up. A great lesson in history. Share your favorite moments in history with us on Facebook. History has taught us that there was once a time when many citizens were not allowed to vote. Midterm elections are over and Republicans now have control of Congress. I set out to break down how voter turnout has played a factor in the results. The states of South Carolina and North Carolina, along with many other states, were deemed as red states after this year's midterm elections. Voter turnout in South Carolina was the lowest in 40 years. These results are leading some to consider how low voter turnout affected the shift in power. It's very discouraging and it shows that people have, um, you know, they're not confident in their government and a lot of people just feel like their one vote, you know, does not count. Although South Carolina struggled with low voter turnout, the nearby battleground state of North Carolina had one of the most highly contested Senate races. The truth is, there's a real difference in this campaign. North Carolina's Senate race was also one of the most expensive in the nation. Over $111 million were spent on the heated battle. Despite the vast turnout differences between the two neighboring states, experts agreed that many voters showed up on Election Day to express their disapproval of current leadership. The people who vote in the midterms, who turn out to vote in the midterms, tend to be angry at the president. Um, and they're motivated to turn out to vote against something that the president's done that they didn't like. Despite the discouraging numbers, some say that the future of voter turnout is hopeful. I don't think that it's, it's something that is hopeless. I think it's the trend and it will continue. And I think as younger people get older, then they gravitate more towards the issues. That's something we need to educate ourselves with first, is that voting in every election is extremely, extremely important. 
the political campaigning ads may have stopped showing, the topic of politics is still on the air. Join us for our conversation on Twitter. Another topic of recent discussion is domestic violence. Every nine seconds, a woman in the U.S. is beaten or assaulted. Domestic violence is the leading cause of injury to women, more than car accidents, mugging, and rapes combined. Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity hosted a program called Blur Blurred Lines, an event that focused on domestic violence. The improvisational theater group Skin Deep performed, showcasing the different types of abuse. Important to be aware so you can tell the signs, so you can tell so you can help others how to, give out of, how to get out of the situation and also so you can just be a voice for the community. For people who are afraid to speak up for themselves, you'll know to speak up for them. I found out that most cases aren't reported to the police, so I feel as though we need to build the awareness so people can realize how important it is. In South Carolina, after one offense for domestic violence, one could get up to 30 days in prison. After three or more offenses, a perpetrator can get up to five years. Despite the potential consequences of domestic violence, cases are still prevalent. Reporter Rachel Richardson takes an in-depth look at victims and how they can escape the, the cycle of abuse. Um, I, I do know someone who has been like domestic violence more as emotional, not for as physical as just someone talking down to them. I think they just need to Remember that they are someone and they have a purpose in life, so don't depend on one person. The brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity and the actors of Skin Deep got together to educate Winthrop's community about domestic violence. How can I love you when you don't love me? But how can you love me if I, if I don't even love me? The audience watched as actors portrayed various types of domestic violence. The fraternity decided to hold the event because a lot of recent news and events have been happening, so we just wanted to stress um, the importance of it not happening. The message here tonight is that love shouldn't hurt. Oftentimes, women do not escape the physical abuse. Instead, they wear a brave mask. And sometimes, the law can't even keep up. Unfortunately, in South Carolina with domestic violence, we are unable to charge students because they're not married or in a household or cohabitating with someone. So what do victims do? People, if people feel they're in a bad relationship, they need to step back and evaluate what's going on, you know, to make that call and then try and remove themselves from the actual situation. For more ways that you can seek help from domestic violence, visit Victim Services in Crawford. Rachel Richardson, Winthrop Close Up. If you know someone that is suffering as a result of domestic violence, do your part in making sure they are aware of available services. From searching from safety from domestic violence to seeking safety on campus, reporter Jerion Manning takes a look at what Winthrop University campus police officers are doing to keep crime down here on campus. In light of a very recent sexual harassment case on campus, tensions may be high when it comes to feelings about on-campus safety and security. But what are campus police doing to keep Winthrop a safe place? And as far as patrolling campus, we have um, what we feel like is an adequate number of officers on campus patrolling at all time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Um, that's not going to change. That's going to continue to be the same concept as we've always been using. Though the incident was recent, some students feel that it was an isolated incident and that they are no more or less safe than they were before. Others feel that campus police can do more. Um, I still feel pretty safe. You know, that can happen to anyone anywhere, any college, you know, the police did all they could um, to the best that they could. So I still feel pretty safe. I just have to be more aware when I'm out, whenever I'm walking at night and stuff. Uh, it can be improved, you know. Um, the police actually walking around here maybe could help. When walking alone at night, sometimes simply being on the phone or simply having a friend with you can help to ward off those who are looking to do you wrong. Now we do a variety of programming for all students here at uh, Winthrop and as, as far as 
any of everything from physical defense is our RAD program, which stands for Rape and Aggression Defense Program that we offer for women right now. And we also offer educational programs throughout all the resident halls. Danger is out there. And though campus police do their best to protect you, you should take precautions as well. Jerry on Manning, Winthrop Close-Up. Do your part and walk in well-lit areas at night. Use the buddy system and steer clear of any suspicious activity you may see. A noteworthy fact about our campus is that there are currently 47 countries represented in Winthrop Student Body. Sadly, there seems to still be a division between international students and American students. That's why Winthrop hosts Casual Friday, an event where American students and international students can mingle and talk to each other. This past Friday, students had the chance to learn how to make a difference, to how to make different things from other cultures. Program sponsor Leanne Laurie says Casual Friday open the door of communication between people from different backgrounds. Get to know someone from another culture or have interactions with them, then you're just going to still think they're the others. Don't miss the opportunity to be a part of Casual Friday. And it happens three times each semester and all are cultural event approved. Coming up on Winthrop Close Up, we'll join Tab of the Corley in the CNN News Center. Plus, how your personal information could be used by someone else, and which fast food restaurant is getting a major overhaul up next. Smaller campuses see a greater impact when it comes to anonymous posting. Find out what some college students are yik yakking about. Welcome to the CNN News Center. I'm Tab of the Corley with your latest in national news. Make a comment, but keep your identity a secret. That's exactly what students are doing here on campus with apps and sites like Yik Yak. I set out to find out why anonymous postings are so popular. Last, uh, last spring, Yik Yak really started to blow up in the southeast and it kind of hit Winthrop and I was like, what is this app? Yik Yak is an anonymous social app that allows anyone to post comments. The South Carolina originators saw the app as a way for everyone to have a say. We've definitely seen some yik yak stuff on campus. From an administrative standpoint, they can, they can be very problematic, you know, because if someone posts a threat or posts something about an assault or posts something about, you know, anything on there, we have to take it seriously. Yik Yak says in its terms and conditions that they track posts and do not stand for bullying. However, one student experienced it firsthand as he was praying and reading his Bible at the amphitheater. And they thought I was upset, so they posted about it. And suddenly, everyone started freaking out and asking if I was okay. The Yik Yak timeline shows what people are talking about within a 10-mile radius. One student says that since Winthrop is so small, it's easy to point out who the posts are talking about. It's kind of scary, actually, because when it first started, a lot of people um, were really terrified of it because they would like go on there and realize that someone had been like yik yakking about them because they had like literally described them. On the other hand, many use the app as a way to stay informed and spread the word about events and complete their on-campus duties. Yik Yak, probably once or twice a day, like when I first get up just to kind of see if anything's happened over the night, um, and that's like from an RA perspective. So before you make a post, be aware of who's looking at you and how your message might be received. Tabitha Corley, with the Close Up. Since its debut, the app has had mixed reviews, and some institutions have banned the app altogether. What do you think about Yik Yak? Share your thoughts on our Facebook page. On the White House website, President Barack Obama addressed the Federal Communications Commission on the issue of net neutrality. Currently, Internet providers and lob are, fa are lobbying the FCC to allow fast lane services where certain websites will work faster, paying a fee to the ISP. Several large websites, including Google and Reddit, oppose that plan and side with those who want the Internet to remain free and open, a sentiment the president shared in his, in his video. That's why I'm laying out a plan to keep the Internet free and open. And that's why I'm urging the Federal Communications Commission to do everything they can to protect net neutrality for everyone. They should make it clear that whether you use a computer, phone, or tablet, Internet providers have a legal obligation not to block or limit your access to a website. Cable companies can't decide which online stores you can shop at or which streaming services you can use. And they can't let any company pay for priority over its competitors. 
With growing concerns about the internet and privacy, we are seeing a new reason to be concerned about another way to communicate with each other. The U.S. Postal Service fell victim to hackers as one official says criminals gained access to the system and snagged data from 750,000 employees and retirees. Information such as addresses, social security numbers, and birthdays were stolen. The hackers also stole in personal information of nearly 3 million customers. USPS, USPS says affected customers will not need to take action. The Postal Service will pay for employees and retiree credit monitoring. As mail is delivered by sea and air, a new agreement gives two countries more time to take to the skies. The U.S. and China have agreed on a new travel visa policy for students, tourists, and businesses. President Obama made the announcement while in Beijing for the summit of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation. Under the current arrangement, visas between our two countries last for only one year. Under the new arrangement, student and exchange visas will be extended to five years. Business and tourist visas will be extended to 10 years. This change in policy is expected to boost the U.S. economy. White House officials say the agreement will result in more than 400,000 American jobs by the year 2021 and a profit of nearly $85 billion. Planning for a future profit is also on the radar for Pizza Hut. With eight straight quarters of declining sales, Pizza Hut is looking to revamp its menu and jumpstart sales. It won't be the same Pizza Hut as we know with a new logo and new uniforms. The menu will double in size with a wide variety of crust selections, sauce choices, and premium toppings such as Peruvian cherry peppers. They will also offer healthier choices with a 250 calorie pizza slice. This wraps up this week's CNN News Report. Let's take it back to Leslie and Gabrielle in the newsroom. Thank you, Tabitha. Coming up on with a close up. Put your own unique spin on a cold weather classic. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. Many college students spend more than they budgeted for, especially for fashion. Reporter Brandon Great discovers if shopping is becoming an obsession. If I'm on my iPad, if I'm just laying around the house, you know what I'm on? Shopping apps. I'm constantly looking at different clothing sites. It's just an obsession. <laughs> According to studybreakscollegemedia.com, 70% of college students are spending their money on fashion. Retailers like H&M and Forever 21 have affordable clothing that is easily accessible to students. Because it's fast fashion, because it's cheap and it's constantly changing, that means that young people feel like, okay, I spent $5 for that, I spent $20 for it. They don't feel like they have to hold on to it for a long time they can turn their wardrobe very quickly. Clothing allows students the opportunity to express their individuality. They can be edgy, conservative, and in some cases, very over the top. But shopping also helps to satisfy certain needs and fill voids in college students' lives. There is no void in my life. When I don't shop, that is the void in my life. I shop because it makes me happy. It's a part of me, it's who I am. I love to shop. Just like, okay, I'm feeling down today, let me go buy something. <laughs> or I did well on the test, let me go celebrate by buying something. I just like keeping a collection of things. Say I get a bad grade back from one of my classes and I'm feeling down, my first go-to is to shop. And it makes me feel better. Like, it makes me happy to shop. So that's, yeah, it definitely feels in voice. When shopping, students have to look for clothing that is fashionable and affordable. So they spend a lot of time shopping for the right things to complete their wardrobe. Brandon Great, Winthrop Close Up. Change Citizens in the U.S. like to indulge in retail therapy. People in China spent billions on the world's biggest online shopping day. November 11th is Singles Day, and it's a day to celebrate being single. China's big e-commerce company, Alibaba, says shops spent $2 billion in just the first hour. Last year, total online sales in China hit $8 billion on Singles Day, more than doubled the combined $3 billion sold in the U.S. for Black Friday and Cyber Monday, according to the Boston Consulting Group. Reporter Melissa Nobles explains why increasing the number of restaurants on campus is good for business. The Georgia Student Center is a popular spot for Winthrop students. 
but the expensive prices make on-campus dining a bit unappetizing. I really hope that Winthrop food gets better after I leave because I was really disappointed, especially in how much they charge us. Um, the quality and variety that they offer is just, it's not worth the price. And that's why I got rid of my meal plan after my first year. Franchising to restaurants will result in higher food quality and lower costs. I could just stop by and get it whenever, so that would be a lot more convenient and I'd probably come a little bit more often. Schools like UNCC franchise to restaurants and as a result, offer students recognizable dining options including Bojangles, Chick-fil-A, Salsaritas, Wendy's, and Mama Leon's. In comparison, Winthrop offers Jump Asian, Burger Studio, The Wedge, and Popeyes. If students had more recognizable and affordable options, they would spend more money here, which would not only be good for the students, but also for Winthrop. Dining services refuse to comment on the issue, but the reality is, if companies had to compete for the prime real estate on campus, Winthrop could also end up paying less for each contract. Winthrop Coast Up, Melissa Noble. Up next on Winthrop Close Up, we'll join Rachel Richardson with your arts and entertainment. Stay tuned to find out how one food brings people together in Charlotte. Welcome to Arts and Entertainment. I'm Rachel Richardson. Hot chocolate goes hand in hand with the cold weather. What better way to enjoy a cup than creating your own? Phi Beta Lambda, a business fraternity at Winthrop, gave students the chance to do just that with their hot chocolate extravaganza, along with their homemade bake sale in Diggs Lobby. Um, we all worked together to put this bake sale together. For example, one of our members went and went and baked, um, baked all the baked goods. We went out and bought the ingredients for the hot chocolate and the ingredients to put into it. So it was a group effort from all parts of PBL. Um, I got a uh, hot chocolate classic and like a, a chocolate pound cake. Um, it's really cheap and it's for a good cause. They had a lot of different flavors, but I like to stick with the classic uh, milk chocolate. If you missed the extravaganza or would like more information about the business fraternity, contact us with your questions. As the air starts to chill, everyone will be celebrating the change of the seasons and the falling of leaves in a different way. Reporter Chris Gaitan tells us more about a little-known Charlotte fall tradition. Sausage is one of the world's oldest enjoyed cuisines, with its origins dating back to the earliest humans. A common love of sausage is what brings people together for Sausage Fest, an annual event in Charlotte that is organized by JJ's Red Hots. Uh, well, we, uh, we wanted to do something here in Dilworth. Uh, this part of town is a uh, very historic part of town. And, uh, you know, as you can see by the turnout, uh, people responded. So we started the first year, it was really popular, so we decided to make it an annual event. Participants were able to enjoy unlimited sausage samples and live music with a craft area for the kids. A lot of people come out here, they're used to bad sausage and bad hot dogs with a lot of preservatives, with synthetic casings, and we do it all natural. We, we put our heart into it, we put a love into it, and at the same time, we just want everyone to enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Here at Sausage Fest, participants got to try a wide variety of exotic sausages. For example, I got to try the cheese broth. beer out here too. It's, it's a good event, nice people out here. The dogs are real friendly. I've liked everything I've seen so far. It's great to see that everyone is having a fun time at Sausage Fest. Chris Gaitan, Winthrop Close Up. For more information on upcoming events and festivals in the area, check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for updates. The weekend box office results are in. An animated film won the box office this weekend, eclipsing expectations. Disney's Big Hero 6 is the story about a young inventor and his robot. Families flocked to the flick. 
Big, Big Hero 6 opened strong, making a little under $60 million at the box office. Acclaimed director Christopher Nolan's Interstellar came in second, a spot Nolan isn't used to. This is the first time that one of his films has been nabbed in the number one spot since 2002, and Gone Girl starring Ben Affleck is holding strong at number three. This wraps up arts and entertainment for this week. If you would like your program or organization featured on the show, email us a description and take it back. Email us a description. Now let's take it back to Gabrielle and Leslie in the newsroom. Thanks, Rachel. From classic to downright daring, models showed off several new trends at a recent fashion show. Reporter Damon Max takes us to the runway. With the cold weather comes layers upon layers. A true fashionable person views this time of year as a season of creative expression. The MassCom 370 Public Relations Principals class held their Fall into Fashion fashion show to raise money for the annual MassCom dinner. Not only is it a fashion show, but it's also a stylist competition. Wild card outfit, I had Julius and a uh, denim shirt, olive green pants, cream uh, cardigan, uh, garnet, garnet crimson color scarf. I chose that attire uh, just because it was something outside of his natural realm, uh, the clothing that he wears, so and it was a good fall attire look. The fashion show was held here in Richardson Barroom and preparation was said to be the hardest part of getting the show together. I was head of the day of committee and we assigned everyone jobs in the class to do the day of the event. It was a lot of hard work, but it all turned out really well. I really enjoyed working with all the people in my class and watching everything that we had worked so hard for during the week turn out. I love the decorations. I thought the decorations really um, carried out the theme because the theme was recycling. And so they had these huge pom-poms made out of um, old Johnsonians, I thought that was kind of clever, and they had confetti made out of um, old newspapers, they had recycled bottles with lights in them and cans. Um, I really thought the whole, the whole thing came together well. No, we gotta find a way to live above and we got Overall, a little above. over 150 people attended the show. The proceeds were kept as closed, but it still looks like the mass calm dinner will be a huge success next year. Demond Mack went through close up. Our very own reporter, Brandon Great, was the winner of the show's stylist competition. Congratulations, Brandon. That brings us to the end of this week's Winter Close-Up. As always, connect with us on your favorite social media sites. We'll see you next week for another Winter Close-Up.